counting down 20 classic commercials. From the biggest ads to some of the sexiest. From the most popular favourites to the truly memorable. Get the cool look, the cool look. Good evening and welcome to 20 to 1. Classic commercials. I'm your host, Bud Tingwell, and tonight we're counting down 20 TV commercials that Australians remember better than some of the programs they supported. So let's start the countdown at number 20. They say home is where the heart is, and if it's pro heart, you're going to need to get a cleaner in, even if it is a stain master carpet. Stain master carpets, artistic okay, qualities. Yellow, it's colour. It's luxurious depth. I'm not sure. Is that ad about the carpet, the paint, or cleaning products? However, when it came to Stain Master Carpet's built in resistance to most household stains, Pro wasn't really interested. Master's touch. I suppose the great ad campaigns punch buttons in you, they press buttons in you, and the one with Pro Heart, where he's on the carpet and the cleaning lady comes in and says, Oh, Mr. Hart! Oh, Mr. Hart! What? Somehow, I don't know why that one worked, it just did. And it uses one of the great classic techniques of advertising, which is the outrageous demonstration. Carpets themselves are pretty boring, but if you can do something spectacular on top of them, then people will still watch the ad. I'm sure the sales of his art actually went up after that ad, and the pain of seeing the maid eventually clean up that artwork just got to everyone. At the time, she was the most famous cleaning lady in Australia, until Rose Bordius came along. At number 19, moving pictures and salty language joined forces in this memorable ad for beer nuts. Sorry! You know how it is. It's a bit wet over there. A bit wet over here, too. Let me get some drinks. No, let me. Waiter, drinks all around. Well, if we're going to make a party of it, let's nibble Nobby's nuts. The reason why I think this ad works is that it speaks to our combined love of salty snacks and genital-based humour. And I don't think there are enough things in the media that tap into that. Australians are irreverent and we're naughty and we love the double entendre. Let's nibble Nobby's nuts. I mean, it just struck the chord, didn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Let's nibble Nobby's nuts. At number 18, it's Elle McPherson selling Bend On Lingerie. Is annoyed all the women who are watching. Oh, look at her. I mean, you know, look, wh wh what would you talk to her about? The looks are going. I had that body ten years ago. If you want to sell bend and underwear, which Elle McPherson's done superbly, sex sells. There's only a few people in the world who could storm down the reception in their underwear. You've got a payer. Elle is one of them. I think the guys would be drooling over that one. <laughs> play it again, Sam. Come on, play it again. Did someone say play it again? Here is a young Elle McPherson turning heads for Tab. Tab, cola has a beautiful taste. So good for beautiful people. Tab, cola, beautiful to you and me. Cos every can has less than two calories. 
and she's one of the most desirable women in the world. And, you know, the campaign works because it's selling sex and it's selling L. Well, that ad was for the boys. This one's for the girls. Shit. Um, pants, please. For 30 years, the female appeared in ads uh, as a sexual uh, being. Now, all of a sudden, the, the boot's on the other foot. One day. Men are being portrayed with their six packs, with their muscles, treated like pieces of meat, and the women have finally got their own back. One day, you're gonna get caught. One day. Oh, he's probably gay. At number 17, uh oh, it's time to get leggy with Razumatab. Uh oh, Razumatab. Razzmatazz had a great jingle, it was fun, upbeat, but really it was about being appreciated. You're going to wear this on your legs, no matter what your legs look like, and people are going to love you, especially men. Razzmatazz girl would always rock around in little short skirts and <laughs> you know, big high, knee high boots and stuff and we'd go, oh, put your legs away, doll. We know that they're you're the Razzmatazz girl. And at number 16, a bunch of swinging voters changes the government in 72. commercial was absolutely a first. It captured the spirit of the moment. I mean, there was little Patty of the Maroubra stomp days getting up there and yelling, it's time, it's time, and Whitlam with his new fluffy hairdo that he'd just uh, been introduced to. Uh, it uh, was just an amazing contrast. <laughs> Everybody was anybody was in it. Jimmy Hannon, Bert Newton, Graham Kennedy was in it, uh, I was in it. There was hundreds of us, because I remember we weren't singing it all together and I went out the front and beat time to make sure that everybody was when we did the commercial. Look, it looks hilarious uh, when you watch it now because of the way people are dressed and moving around, but at the time it was absolutely riveting. The sense of anticipation that finally the country was going to change. Gough Whitlam was enormously popular, he was a terrific public speaker, he had great charisma, and as I say, enough people agreed, it was time. And the fact that there was a soundtrack to go with it, uh, and a bunch of people singing what was really the inevitable and unbeatable slogan that it was time. Classic, classic campaign. At number 15, it's a group of women with gas, natural gas. Gas, electricity, water, they're really boring subjects. You've got to do something. And the great thing about the Living Flame uh, commercial is it brought it to life. It really was intoxicating viewing. It was brilliantly choreographed. And um, people were just glued to their screens. The ad was clever, except it did involve... The dancing was a bit much for me. I, I can cope with about... I did a test, I'd go for about 2.8 seconds of, of dancing. After that, I'm not interested. 
If the ads have been 2.8 seconds long, perfect. At 14, a great ad from New Zealand, which, by default, means it's from Australia. Bugger. Ooh, bugger me. Bugger. The bugger ad is is almost become a bit of uh, Australiana in itself, hasn't it? People say, uh, you know, if something's going wrong, they are bugger. Well, the bugger ad is actually uh, from New Zealand, but we've kind of claimed it uh, as our own. Ooh, bugger. And why does it work? Well, it's just plain funny. Bugger is a word that seems to be used in New Zealand more than it is in Australia in that... Oh, bugger. Hey, Brent. Bugger. Bugger. At 13, come on, Aussie, come on. It's World Series cricket. Billy's pounding down like a machine. Pascal's making divots in the green. Marsh is taking wickets. Brooks is clearing pickets. And the chapel's eyes have got that killer gleam. Everyone knew that jingle. Everyone knew how to sing that song. And it was a fun song to sing. Come on, Aussie, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Aussie, come on. We wrote, come on, Aussie, come on overnight. And it was just really a rallying thing, talking about the players and the excitement. And went to number one in the hit parade around the country, and it ran for years and years and years. And then it was lights and beers on the hill and sixes and bounces and limited... It was, it was great. When something works and is so great, it doesn't matter that it's old, it still works. Leave it alone, let's play it again. Come on, Aussie, come on, come on, come on, Aussie, come on. A bit yobberish, a bit boganish at times, but it was always fun to sing. And this was the AFL's most successful commercial, featuring some major international stars. Cats playing the blues longer than me, all sure. I'd like to see that. Clubs full of guys with great bodies? Yeah, I'd like to see that. I hear you guys worship Aussie rules. Hey, what sort of religion is that? A game that's lasted longer than me. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that became part of the vernacular. It was a remarkable campaign. It touched all the nerves that, uh, that people wanted to see. It was great, and it took the VFL to the AFL and made the AFL the number one sport. I'm oh, Norm, and being your normal Australian, I'm a sportsman. Any sort of sport, I'll be in it. Footy, beauty jazzer. Cricket, tennis, golf, the trots, I'll be in them all because I'm an all-round sportsman. And there's not many of us left, though. Norm's our idol. I mean, it's an underground idol because nowadays we have to pretend that we like to go running and stuff, but really, you want to sit around your thongs and drink beer and watch the telly? Absolutely. Norm's the king. Rang the mates this Arvo. <laughs> Warm the set and cool the tinnies, I said. No takers. Norm was meant to be the stereotypical Australian male, and I tell you what, they hit the nail right on the head. I mean, my old man, he never got those Norm commercials, because I said, Gaz, you are Norm. Tomo said he was taking his dog for a walk. Fred said he was going to mow the lawn. Dave, Dave, though, Dave, though, said he was taking the family out flying kites. Everyone remembers the ad, and yet our figures for obesity are exactly the same as they were then. So we all love the ad, but it didn't make us get off our backsides and go and do anything. Us all round sportsmen are a dying race. Oh, life being it. I remember Norm sitting on the couch. I thought Norm was fantastic. I never needed that kind of inspiration or motivation because I was hyperactive and always stayed outside. So, it, truth be told, I don't think I really saw the advertisement that often because <laughs> I was always out and about and being in it. Once we were outside, cartoon characters promoted another important message. It isn't so hot, no it's not, so if you take a run, 
for work in the sun. Should you sizzle like a sausage? Most certainly not. Be especially careful about small kitties. Slap, slap, slap. There is an ad campaign with such amazing cut through, and even now, 30 years later, it's part of our vernacular. It's always slip, slop, slap. It's a sort of three words you can say whether you're saying or pissed or a kid or an adult. Slip, slop, slap. Unforgettable. And what a Valentine's Day gift we got in 1966. Decimal currency. In come the dollars and in come the cents To replace the pounds and the shillings and the pence Be prepared folks when the coins begin to mix On the 14th of February 1966 At 11, it's a compulsory part of every Australian kid's breakfast It's Wheat Bix Aussie kids Are Wheat Bix kids Aussie kids are we big kids? Aussie kids. Are we big kids? Aussie kids. Are we big kids? I guess the difficult thing about wheat picks, you know, wheat picks kids are Aussie kids. You can't make them eat wheat picks. They want cocoa pops. Aussie kids. Are we big kids? Aussie kids. The interesting thing about advertisements these days, of course, is because they're all shot offshore, the kids come to you now and they use an American accent. So I don't think they're going to be Aussie kids anymore. Another popular ad to feature a child actor was for Sorbent. Everyone remembers the adorable Matthew Croc. He's 50 now. Sorbent. Early on, the Witch Bank campaign for the Commonwealth Bank used little tackers to sell financial security. Then it has a roof. Witch Bank. Very big house. And if you think Aussie kids are cute, then French kids, oh, they're twice as cute. Your plat petit miam. Your plat petit miam is iron protein. Is iron protein. Is iron calcium. Is iron calcium. In a top for children. In a top for children. Very good. One of our favourite campaigns that we took the mickey out of was the campaign with the Yoplay ads, you know, with the, the blonde girl and the little blonde fella. No, that's enough. No, no that's, that's enough. enough. C'est fini. We loved doing them, had a lot of fun, and, oh, of course, we never made any mistakes at all. Yours plat petit me arm. Yours plat petit me arm. <laughs> Yours black petite me arm. Yours black petite. <laughs> Is iron protein. Is iron protein. Is iron. <laughs> Come on. It's all acting. Black petite. Oh. At number 10. You can get it when you're sober. You can get it reading a voiceover. It's John Millian's big cold thirst quencher, VB. You sure got a thirst. A hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer. And the best cold beer is Vic. Victoria Bitter. His voice so summed up the, the, the typical Aussie that they never wanted to get rid of the voice. It really is quite magical. You can get it any old how. Matter of fact, I got it now. The interesting thing about VB is the company was too scared for many years to make any changes to the ad, even after Menion's death, because it had proved so successful. I don't thirst needs a big cold beer. And the best cold beer is Vic. A long, cold Vic. Our VB ad was a great ad, actually, and referred to the Aussie outdoors and probably the guy, he was wiping his forehead, he was sweating. Uh, if I feel like a beer, having a beer, I'll order a VB. Well, cold beer goes down really well. You're leading a band or shoveling sand. You can get it any old now. I mean, those classic VB ads, how good were they? I remember going to school. I mean, I went to a school where I was taught by the nuns and, you know, they were horrified that we go to school and sing these ads. And the best cold beer is Vic. Victoria Bitter. And it does make you feel like a VB. You can feel it coming on when you see the ad. A hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer. So it's working. You got a VB? Victoria Bitter. 
Before he hit pay dirt in Crocodile Dundee, Hoag's made a name for himself overseas as the face of Foster's. I don't think we get very far on that surfboard. Still, glad to see there's plenty of the liquid lifesaver. Hmm, like a wave of nectar breaking over your tongue. What's going on there, mate? Oh, they're digging the channel tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it goes further than your bridge. It's amazing how important that ad's become overseas. Like, everywhere I travel in the world, when you walk into a bar, they say, do you want a Foster's? Yes, sir. I'd like one Harvey Warbanger, one Dickie Dickie, and a kiss in the dark, please. So many people overseas just see Foster's, Australia, Hogs, same thing. And if anyone knows how to flog a beer, it's the boys from Mojo. There's lead in the oars as you head back for sure. Neck to neck with the best in the state. One's lost on a wave, it's a pretty close shave, but still, it's anyone's race. Then the, way... the Mojo guys, uh, they did all the Tui's ads, like uh, uh, Lily's pounding down like a machine, and just their voices, uh, uh, I think, is part of advertising history in Australia. How do you be? Another thing Mo and I used to do a lot was take something that was already in the vernacular and, and transfer it to whatever we were doing and make it ours. How do you feel? Mm. I feel like a twoies. It was pretty natural stuff. And here's a big beer ad that's become an instant Aussie classic. I can't imagine what they went through to rehearse and fine tune and edit and get all that right, but well done, guys. That was a brilliant ad. Flying in at number nine, Aeroplane Jelly. The jingle was written by the company founder, and surprise, he was a big fan of aviation. Aeroplane and what a plane. Catch one of those things if you can, the whole world wants to know their secret. That's the boy. Now we'll soon know what the flying saucer really is. Well, the saucers are full of aeroplane jellies. The original disc and things that you might not remember. Yeah, I like the aeroplane jellies. Because in those days, you could say anything. You'd have to prove anything. I like aeroplane jelly. Aeroplane jelly for me. I like it with dinner and... I like it. I like aeroplane jelly. That ad annoyed me so much. <laughs> but it worked, didn't it? At number eight, you wouldn't think it would take an ad to remind us what an important role Mum plays around the house. Well, Tip Top, of course, worked out that the, uh, the Mum's the key purchaser here, so they wanted to make her feel good like she was a champion, like she was running the household, and that she had all the, the kids loving her because they served Tip Top. Australia's Tip Top Wheat. Naturally rich in complex carbohydrates and dietary fiber. It's just a great ad because it reflects your own life. Everyone's mum at some point has made them a sandwich, even the mums that, you know, throw through tuck shop money at you, still made you a sandwich occasionally. Of course, the chief cook and grocery buyer was celebrated in several commercials, blazing a trail through the supermarket aisles with those mojo boys again. And this unforgettable ad for Meadow Lee. As part of growing up, and uh, a song is Tip Top and Meadow Lee and Arnott's and these people relate to the fact that mums do like their kids saying thanks, mum. They're going to be successful. The more you spread it round, the more you see. 
Why Australia's number one is Kelly Lee? Well, I think it was brilliantly written. I mean, you know, they ought to get a Nobel Prize for lines like, I must say, your scones are absolutely bonza. A spud is just a spud without a dog. Born is kind of boring without a knob on top. Well, I like the Mojo stuff. I don't know whether it's because I was around then and it brings back memories for me, but I didn't find them painful. I found them, uh, I'd like that style of Australiana. This is the voice of, I feel like it's too easy, and you ought to be congratulated and come on, Aussie, come on. That's right. That's right, you are. You're not going to sing for us, are you? No, I'm not going to no, sing. Gonna... You ought to be congratulated. At number seven, don't forget to wash behind your ears, it's Decore. Decore. Why do we? Why can we sing all these things? Why are they in our head? Shampoo ads are not something I take a whole lot of notice of anymore. Strangely enough, it's it's funny. I'm not their demographic. This is a particular one that was fun, light, catchy, little bit of a risque ad because you nearly saw some things when those chicks were in the shell. Yes, I. The lady, I remember, she was rather nice. They say she was a mother. I don't believe them. I think she was too nice to be a mother. She was just wonderful. Would I use decoré as if, but I love the ad. Bathroom products have brought us many classic ads through the years. Remember this one for Solvol? Wash your hands, Jeffrey. Wash your hands, Jeffrey. With the Solvol, Jeffrey. Mum got you something special. White Solvol with mineral. The girl down the road for me was in the. Solvol ad. Wash your hands, Jeffrey. Yeah, we were very jealous of her because she hit the big time. And we just, oh, she, you know, she may as well have been a Hollywood star. Give me half, Jeffrey. Wash your hands, Gloria. Solvol for kids. Gets hands clean the first time. And what about this little gem for Uncle Sam deodorant? Need Uncle Sam. Let's get together with the stars and strike cash. The bizarre thing about it, I think, it was so tasteless in the middle of the Vietnam War and some numbskull at an ad agency starts flogging deodorant. And sadly, gone are the days of families travelling around the world in flying bathrooms. Tahiti looks nice. Simon, Tahiti. Roger, we'll go. A little luxury the whole family can enjoy every day. Cousin's Imperial Leather Soap. Okay, folks, here we go. We're going to dial the winner of our Dinner with Tom Cruise competition. Hello. Hello, Julie Rankin. Yeah. Nice work, Julie. You've scored a Dinner with Tom Cruise. <laughs> yes, a stretch limousine will take you to a top city restaurant, then a romantic dinner, just you and Fantastic. Tom. Fantastic. When? Tonight. Tonight? I'm sorry, I can't. What? What? Mum's doing a lamb roast. As if you would turn down Tom Cruise. I love Tom Cruise, and there is no way that I would turn him down for a lamb roast, even though my mum cooks the best in Australia. What? Mum's doing a lamb roast. Oh, great, yeah. Of course she's going to go out with him, you know. Put the bloody lamb in the microwave the next night. Come on. It's one chance in a million. Spring lamb is around for three months. I'd never understood that. I hope you realise I gave up a dinner with Tom Cruise for this. Never mind, love. You can go out with him any night. You know what's interesting is these days I reckon most women would say, no, I'll take the roast. Yeah, I think Tom Star, <laughs> Tom Star is falling. Oh, he'll want to get engaged to me. I'll take the roast. Recently, Australian Lamb found a new spokesman, Slammin' Sam Kekovich. And I'm sickened by the creeping tide of un-Australianism eroding our great traditions, like our custom of eating lamb on Australia Day. Sadly, the scourge of un-Australianism has even infected our national day. A balanced Australia Day diet should consist of a few nice juicy lamb chops and beer and perhaps a bit of pavlova for those with a sweet tooth. Yet your long-haired, dull bludging types are indulging their pierced taste buds in all manner of exotic, foreign, often vegetarian cuisine. It's an absolute disgrace. Do you think the diggers in the trenches were fighting for tofu sausages? No. 
they were thinking of grabbing a lamb chop off the barbie with their bare fingers, sustaining third degree burns, then sticking their hands in a relieving esky to fish out a cold one. So the message is clear, roll out the barbie, ensure the gas bottle's filled, stack the fridge full of lamb and prepare the invitation list. So don't be un-Australian, serve lamb on Australia Day. You know it makes sense. I'm Sam Kekovich. At five, a galaxy of stars. Sure you know where you're going? Sweetheart, it's me driving. Oh! Whoa! Honey, you're on the wrong side of the road! Dad, look out! Oh! Must be his first time on a bike. Dad! Yeah? <laughs> Who's up for a sandwich? And have a look at a young Peter Allen endorsing Vaseline. The irony is, I think all his hair fell out. Get the cool look, the cool look. Get the modern look, get the Vaseline hair cream look. Get the cool look, get the Vaseline hair cream look. Beverly Hillbilly star Donna Douglas came to Australia to promote cornflakes. You're on, Miss Douglas. OK. That's me. Hi, there. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Nick. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Charlie. Hi. Ellie Mae, last call for breakfast. Don't you tell Granny I already had me a bowl of Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Ain't nothing tastes so good. Well, Possums, the secret of my success as an entertainer is my big new Whirlpool refrigerator. And here's housewife megastar Dame Edna Average for Whirlpool refrigerators. Tell us your secret, Dame Edna, they plead. Poor groveling little wretches. Many people ask me why I'm a whirlpool buff. Is it that Mallies are Australian and that patriotic stuff? It's not just their innovation or advanced technology. It's what some people see in my commercials. And everybody sees. And spot the celebrity, this ad for Heinz soup features anyone who is anyone. I like Heinz. I like Heinz. I like Heinz. They like Heinz. It's the most beautiful soup I've ever tried in my life. Great soup. For people like the soup set, only the best is good enough. And the best is Heinz. I like Heinz. At number four, it's the mighty unclean Louis the Fly. Louis the Fly, I'm Louis the Fly, straight from rubbish tip to you, spreading disease with the greatest of ease, straight from... Straight from rubbish tip to you. See, the words just stick in your mind, and he was such cute for a fly. He was a cute little character. <laughs> And everybody was singing it. I was at primary school at the time, and uh, that was huge. Louis the Fly, and that was that was more team. From rubbish tip to you, I'm bad and mean and mighty unclean. Afraid of no one. Afraid of no one except the man with the can of more tea. Hate that word more tea. Poor dear Louis, Louis the Fly, a victim of more tea. A great catchy ad. I don't know why they don't do it anymore. And for those other household pests, there was Flick. How can you be sure there are no white ants in the floor? Bars in the door, silverfish galore. Get a Flick, man. That's your answer. Remember one Flick, and they're gone. There's a Flick man near you. Coming up on 20 to 1, we continue our countdown when we reveal tonight's top three classic commercials. Welcome back to 20 to 1, where we've arrived at tonight's top three classic commercials. And taking the bronze medal, it's an advertisement for the yellow pages and features that unforgettable catchphrase... Count to ten. One, two, three, eight, nine, ten. Not happy, Jan! 
one of those, you know, those lines that have only three words in it, but always brings a smile to my face. Where's our ad in the Yellow Pages directory? I say it, not happy. It says it all. You, you, you don't have to say anything else. And everybody knows what you're talking about. It's a very effective television commercial that you can watch time and time again and still get a kick out of it. And to prove just how effective it was, it's become part of the national language. Not happy, Jan. Not happy, John. Not happy, Jan! At number two, some happy little Vegemites. Vegemite has a special place in Australia's hearts. In black and white television, when soundtracks are recorded on two-track machines, all the modern technology in the world hasn't made commercials any more memorable than Happy Little Vegemite. Is. You talk about ads that have shaped the nation and that sort of thing. For me, music is what does it. You get the catchy jingle and, it, and the way it goes, it sticks with you. I'm a happy little... Music speaks another language to people and I think with these jingles, we've created something special. What was interesting was about six years ago, I think, they actually replayed the ad from everybody's childhood and put a bit of coloured animation. So they didn't even bother modernising it. They just said, hey, it's always been part of your life and this old ad proves it. It's, it's totally unharmful. It doesn't hurt a soul. It doesn't offend the eardrums. It doesn't offend the eardrums. Depends who's singing it. That's a rose in every cheek. <laughs> Vegemite, still one of the world's richest sources of vitamin B. Even at my age, I'm still a happy little Vegemite. Anyway, we've reached the moment you've all been waiting for, the number one classic commercial. claim that full credit for I still call Australia home, but it's one of those rare instances where the client was his idea to use I still call Australia home. It was his idea to actually use the choir. He rang me saying, did you see Carol's White Candlelight last night on TV? Yes, I did. Imagine if we got that whole choir and flew them all around the world and we and the Eiffel Tower, the Statue of Liberty, all st oh, I said, mate, it'd be fantastic. You know, can you imagine? just one of those great soul-stirring songs that I think might mean a little bit more to an Aussie travelling overseas. As much as you've loved being overseas and had fun, to come home and love your country as much as you do is an amazing feeling and that Qantas ad really taps into that beautifully. It makes you very proud. Every time I'm walking through an airport anywhere around the world, I'm so proud to see that red and white tail. No, I just want to jump on it and say, take me home. Not only are we using the lifeblood of Australia, our children, and you know, they're, they're all so singing so beautifully, and some people might think it's a bit corny, I just think it's lovely, it puts a lump in my throat. And they're also showcasing, you know, the very best parts of Australia. So I just love it, yeah, it makes you proud to be Australian. Well, thanks for joining us tonight on 20 to 1. Join us next week when we count down 20 venerable Australian ideas, icons and inventions. Next week on 20 to 1, from the cheeky... Is it cold out? Am I allowed to say that? Welcome back to the MCG. Welcome back to the MCG. To the comfy... They are warm. 
but they should never be seen outside of your trailer. I had to wear them in prison. From homegrown heroes. Um, at the time I was a farmer, so I just wanted him shot. <laughs> to some truly top Aussie ideas. Are we responsible for losing more dogs than any other invention in history?